hoy, tanto de Radio Nahuac como la gente que nos está acompañando de Canal M. Sean bienvenidos a quienes están aquí en este salón. Les agradecemos muchísimo su presencia. Es para Radio Nahuac y para Canal M un día muy especial el poder recibir en vivo y, este, y que esté aquí con nosotros, que nos permita un poco de su tiempo para disfrutar no solo de su música, sino también saber un poco más de Dash Berlin, de toda la emoción que realmente nos causa el escuchar su música, el verlo en un escenario. Hello, welcome to the audience and Dash Berlin. We're excited to have you here. Gracias. Yeah, well, my name is Emmanuel Ruby. I'd like to welcome you to this to your house, uh, Radio Nahuac, in the name of Canal M, and Pacific Club Radio Radio Show. And it's a great pleasure to have you here. And a lot of people are watching this stream right now, and you know, you're locked in the Mexican market. <laughs> so I'd like to start, for those who don't know you that well, you yeah. know that are starting to know. Why don't you tell us about who's Dasperlin, how the project started? Okay. Um, yeah. Hola, queríamos saludarte, queríamos darte la bienvenida y estar en tu casa. Este público, el mercado mexicano en general te ama, pero para los que no te conocen, nos gustaría que saber quién eres. Cuéntanos. Uh, Dash is a, is a project of uh, three people where uh, we make music with the three of us and uh, I uh, yeah, more act like the, the, the artist on the road, the DJ as well. Um, we connected to Uh, back in the days, uh, around 2001, it was in a record shop where I uh, used to work. And uh, yeah, I was a, a record store servant and uh, I helped uh, those guys out um, yeah, as advisor for uh, the, the records they, uh, they wanted to play in their set at the time. And uh, we, we started to hang out as, uh, as, as friends as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, from, from a friend perspective, they um, They were already working on music. I was already working on music, but we joined forces in the studio. And uh, after they quit uh, other projects, um, we, we started to decide mm -hmm. to uh, finish uh, what, what we had been working on, and that was Tilt Skyfall Sound. It eventually became Tilt Skyfall Sound. Um, so we had to find a name for the project. And uh, my background as a DJ brought me also to Berlin, mm -hmm. where I was very, very impressed of the city and, and also uh, the fact that I was one of the witnesses of the love parade in Berlin itself for two years. Uh, it was such an overwhelming experience for me that I uh, thought it was a very nice idea to make Berlin part of the project name. And after combining several words with, uh, with Berlin, Yeah, I stumbled on, on, on Dash Berlin. Uh, got a blank Google page where nothing uh, appeared. Uh, nothing <laughs> appeared, and that, that was a very fresh uh, starting point uh, for us to start. Um, and when Till the Sky Falls Down was released, it got a lot of support all over the world. But um, it, it got a special place here in Mexico. From the first time I got here, I don't know what. What, what happened, but something magical happened, which still exists. Um, it, it's, a, it's a track that touched uh, a lot of people uh, right into their hearts, and is still embraced as one of the, the favorite tracks of Dash Berlin here in Mexico. And because of the support worldwide of Mexico, uh, my, my career at Dash Berlin got skyrocketed and uh, actually got launched. So that's why I usually say that Dash Berlin has been born in Mexico as an artist. And um, yeah, I've been coming back uh, as much as I could ever since. Yeah, I'm actually looking for love. Great to have you here. Es un proyecto, Dash Berlin es un proyecto que empezó como tres personas, y tú y tres personas, aunque yo soy el, el artista, el DJ, la persona que aparece. En el 2001 empecé a trabajar en una tienda de discos, fui empleado y ahí conocí a estas personas involucradas. Me empezaron a pedir asesoría musical para ver qué canciones tocar, qué canciones comprar. Empezamos a, a reunirnos, creció de ahí una amistad y, y ya de cierto modo todos nosotros estábamos trabajando en el mundo de la música de cierta manera, pero decidimos ya unir esfuerzos en el estudio. Ya después todos eh, renunciamos a nuestros empleos y decidimos juntarnos en este proyecto 
que básicamente surgió con el single Till the Sky Falls Down. El nombre Nash Berlin surgió por un, un cariño especial hacia Berlín, una ciudad que siempre me había impresionado. Fui testigo eh, del Love Parade y adoré esa experiencia, así que decidí incluir Berlín en el nombre del proyecto. Tratamos de usar varias combinaciones, de mezclar la palabra Berlín con muchas palabras, hasta que surgió Dash Berlín y encontramos que en Google, en una búsqueda de Google, apareció en blanco, así que nuestros puntos son es un muy buen punto de partida. Hemos, a partir de ese sencillo, hecho un Skype Down, pues tenemos recibido apoyo en todo el mundo pero especialmente en México, como que algo mágico ocurrió y continúa ocurriendo. Llegamos con esa canción al corazón de la gente y hasta la fecha sigue siendo una de las canciones favoritas. Por eso creemos que México catapultó mi carrera y prácticamente fue aquí en México que Dash Berlin nació como Perfecto. Uh, my name is Alan. My friends call me Gochi. Gochi? Gochi, yes, Gochi. Uh, I have a, I'm a DJ, announcer, and producer for Radio Show Canada, and I, will, and I want to know more about Dash Berlin Life. I want to know uh, an opinion about what I, I, I'm thinking, actually. Uh, what do you think about the habit of purchasing music? I mean, for example, there are a lot of uh, online services, streaming services, such as you know, we Vivo, we have Spotify, yep. we have the new one of JC Titles. Yep. Uh, we have also the newest, the freshest one, uh, iTunes Music. What do you think, Dash, about uh, this habit? The people should buy music or in, t in 10, 5, I don't know, 15 years, the music should be free? Um, actually, I'm a little bit... Oh, oof, translation first. La pregunta es, ¿cuál es tu opinión acerca del hábito de comprar música? Porque hoy ya tenemos muchas otras plataformas, está Vivo, JC Tidal, Spotify, recientemente iTunes Music. Entonces, ¿qué opinas sobre el hábito? ¿La gente va a continuar comprando música o unos 15 años ya será gratuito? As an artist, I'm a little bit in between because um, I've started DJing many years ago. Um, in a time where it was very normal to buy to buy your music, uh, when I was a, a young a young kid, when I went to to a shop, then I bought or cassette tapes, cassette tapes eventually went CDs. Uh, CDs went to uh, records where I, where I like to buy like single records eventually to mix with, and although. Uh, the vinyl market is still alive. Um, the internet brought a very, very big change in how people can listen to music. One of those things that we just mentioned is um, online services. But before online services, you already had like MP3s, uh, AIFFs, uh, waves that you can buy. From my point of perspective, um, as a, as a person, but also as an artist, I buy my music because I like to have it. I like to own what I like to play or what, what, like, what I like to listen to. But at the same time, we have to understand that this is a different time. A time where the follow-ups of changes is going very quickly. So, I am free in the choice, and everybody in the world is free in the choice to buy something or not. But for the nowadays standard, and just because everything is going so quickly, and you want to decide in a split second, you want to listen to this track, or you want to listen to that track, I think that's a, that's a, that's a great option for people to give, because that's in demand of nowadays people that they want to have the option of a cloud or you have the option of a streaming and i see it as a big plus because it enables people to collect even more music than they would maybe do if they had to buy something so in terms of the promotion the total promotion for the music worldwide 
I think it's a good thing. On the other hand, you have the business side of the music. To be honest, I don't worry myself too much with the business side of music for Dash Berlin as it is, but I know for a fact that on the contrary, artists, authors, singer-songwriters, producers, they are not going to work for free. So the question you have to ask is how do you make a model where you can also earn as a producer for the music a part of the, the, the music that people are listening to for free? That's where advertisement comes in. And one of the things which is really smart is what they do really well with Spotify is they give you se separate options. I'm just naming Spotify as an uh, example. And I think that's a, a, good, uh, a good way of um, giving people an option where they have to buy a little, and they get a lot, or they get a little, and they get it for free. She's, she's uh, running <laughs> down the whole book. <laughs> 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 we, we have to type it out and make it a desperate in interview book. <laughs> <risa> como soy artista y persona soy un poquito en medio de esta discusión de la discusión de, del hábito de comprar música o de que la música sea gratuita empecé como DJ hace muchos años y cuando era chavo para mí era muy normal comprar la música no comprar las tiendas el, el comprar la música en las tiendas primero cassettes después CDs discos, los sencillos para mezclar, incluso los viniles que, que continúan vivos incluso a la fecha. Sin embargo, ya la era del Internet cambió la forma de oír música del mundo. E incluso antes de que el mundo musical se volviera online, pues ya había forma de compartir música a través de los temas de tres, y los ya para comprar. Entonces, como, como artista, como ser humano, en lo particular sí les puedo decir que yo compro mi música porque me gusta ser dueño de, de lo que tengo, de todo lo que tengo a mi disposición y porque he mantenido el hábito de comprar. Pero sabemos que lo, esta época que todo ha cambiado y que precisamente estos cambios se van suscitando de forma muy rápida. Yo creo que todos somos libres de elegir si comprar o no pero en la actualidad, con todos los cambios rápidos que están sucediendo, nos pasa que en medio segundo ya queremos decidir si vamos a oír esta rola o vamos a cambiar y vamos a escoger otra. Entonces, lo, lo mejor, lo más importante es que tenemos la opción y también depende de la demanda. Y es muy bueno que la gente tenga la opción de contar con música, ya sea vía streaming, vía cloud, porque es un gran plus. Ahora, Especialmente yo creo que les ayuda a los coleccionistas de música, que sí, así pueden hacerse de un mayor acervo. También nos ayuda la promoción en, en todo el mundo de, de todas las distintas plataformas. Ahora ya con respecto al mundo de los negocios, eso honestamente no es algo que me quite el sueño. Sin embargo, sí considero que tanto autores, productores, artistas no van a querer trabajar de gratis. Entonces, la pregunta sería generar un modelo que nos permita seguir ganando a los productores, a los compositores, pero que el público continúe beneficiando en forma gratuita de la música. Y ahí es donde yo creo que entra el factor publicidad. Por ejemplo, solo por citar un ejemplo, está Spotify, que es una, me permite una buena plataforma, pero si sí, o cobran un poquito o creciendo mucho, o, o cobran un poquito y de todas formas o, o, o no cobren nada, ¿no? Pero eso le digo la publicidad. Dash, algo muy padre que vemos es, hoy estás en Argentina, mañana en Colombia, ¿qué pasa cuando dejas el escenario, cuando dejas este lugar y tienes que llegar a tu habitación? ¿Te olvidas un poquito de la música o qué pasa? So, it's extremely cool that you're here, like today you're in Mexico, tomorrow you'll be in Argentina, then you'll be in, you'll be in Colombia. But what happens when you leave the stage? When you go back to your hotel room, what happens? Do you leave the music aside? Uh, absolutely not. Um, just only in my, my phone, I have 1,300 
tracks I like to listen to. I just put it on shuffle. It goes all over from rock, indie, pop, house, techno, all over. And the same goes when I go back to my hotel room. I open up my laptop, I can work on music, but I also can get inspired to, to make something from listening to this music. I have a lot of music I just bought yesterday. I even bought uh, uh, two, two new compilations from where I think, oh, interesting. I want, to know, I want to know more. I want to listen more. And uh, that's how I can get inspired as well to, uh, to get ideas for new music. So also with uh, nowadays social media, it doesn't just stop by going back to your hotel. <laughs> because I like uh, the interaction with the fans of Facebook, or Twitter, Instagram, where I can. And uh, luckily I have uh, great help for that. Uh, because I can simply do not you know, do that all by myself. It's, that's impossible. Uh, but this is just an, uh, a small piece of uh, you know what happens when I when I go back and don't sleep, <laughs> <laughs> barely sleep uh, in the in the hotel. <laughs> De ninguna manera me alejo de la música cuando regreso o cuando estoy sola. Y en mi teléfono tengo 1300 canciones, entonces lo que suelo hacer es que regreso, pongo shopo y después soy una combinación de música. De rock, de indie, pop, house, techno, lo que sea. Así que cuando regreso al hotel, eso es lo que hago, oigo música o sencillamente abro mi laptop y me pongo a trabajar y me pongo a trabajar en lo mío o me inspiro a partir de la música que estoy oyendo. Precisamente ayer compré dos recopilaciones porque lo que me interesa es conocer más, así me inspiro y saco ideas para crear nueva música. Además está el detalle de las redes sociales en la actualidad que no te permiten solamente regresar a tu cuarto de hotel y ya. A mí me encanta interactuar con mis fans en Twitter, en Instagram, en, en Facebook, pero claro, tengo ayuda para eso, no lo puedo manejar solo porque sería imposible. Esa es una, solamente una pequeña parte de lo que hago cuando regreso a mi cuarto de hotel y obviamente no logro conciliar el sueño. Well, Dash, uh, now I want to keep talking about your music. Yeah. Remember when you started with Until the Sky, well, not started, but you know, the, that big hit, Till the Sky Fall Down, until now your recent album, uh, we are. I'd like to see how, what you think about how music has evolved because if you see there are some positive comments about yeah it's opening the market and yeah you know a younger audience is getting involved and all of that. Others say no this should stay underground, this should stay like away from pop. So what, what are your thoughts about all of that? It's actually a kind of a small reference to your question. Yeah. Why? It's really easy because music no matter what style gives you an option to choose. And although a lot of music has a certain commercial value, you can choose the type of music that fits you best. Um, going back to the first part of your question, if you listen to the, the New Daylight, which was our first album, and you listen now to uh, uh, We Are, and this year we, we are going to present We Are Part Two. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's logical that there's going to be a, a difference because it's been a while since the New Daylight. I think it was 2009, yeah. now we're in 2015. And probably you can back me up on this also making music, is that the ways we can produce music constantly change. Updates, new plugins, uh, new, new sounds, everything. So it would be unlogical to have the same music as six years ago. From an artist and producer standpoint, I think it's always very important to look towards the future. Always be progressive, because if you don't do that, you're going to get stuck. And you're going to get stuck, and it's going to, yeah, well, it, it could be boring for uh, your fan base as well.
hasta llegar a este alumno docente que es real. Ha habido una evolución. Entonces, la pregunta es que qué opinas de, de la apertura del mercado, del de involucramiento de más jóvenes o, o la gente que, que está más bien en el movimiento underground y cómo, cómo se da esa aceptación dentro del tipo de música que hace. La respuesta es que es muy fácil precisamente porque tener diferentes estilos, o mientras más estilos haya, nos da más opciones de elegir. Incluso hay opciones de elegir entre la música comercial. Cuando, si, si escuchamos el primer álbum que fue New Daily, y llegamos a We Are, que es el actual, y el, el próximo lanzamiento que está a punto de salir, que es We Are, segunda parte, lógicamente te vas a poder dar cuenta que hay una gran diferencia y además también han transcurrido seis años. El primero se editó en el 2009, el segundo en el 2015. Y también sería absurdo pretender continuar haciendo música de la misma manera o produciendo música de la misma forma si todo el tiempo salen nuevos plugins o salen nuevos updates, hay nuevos sonidos. Entonces sería ilógico, sería absurdo continuar haciendo música que como se hacía hace seis años. Los artistas y los, y los productores siempre tenemos en mente el futuro, siempre miramos hacia el futuro y es un momento importante. Y si no, sería muy aburrido para los fans. Hay que sumar a la gente, hay que incorporarla a la experiencia, porque la vida de todo el mundo va cambiando, entonces todos vamos evolucionando juntos. Hay, el, el, puede, ser, puede haber una persona que esté muy metida en el movimiento underground techno, en el big room radio, house, pero pues esas son las opciones que hay, todo depende del gusto de cada persona y de cómo quieran seguir. Es lógico que haya una progresión también al oír música y hay gente que quizás haya empezado primero con lo underground, después se pase a lo comercial, lo oír radio y a otras personas les sucede al revés. Nada más se trata de, de ver en qué perspectiva nos encontramos ahora o incluso el mood es lo bueno de la música electrónica que nos da esa opción. Hello. 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 I am Giselle. Welcome am, to the show. I am Giselle. Uh, I am a director of the business entertainment management in, in the network of the university. Um, I have two, two questions. Okay. The first, in Mexico, it, it's important for you because I know Uh, do help the people like uh, mistake uh, community. Yeah. Um, like I like I just explained in the beginning when we started the interview is that I see it as being born as an artist here in Mexico. And 
I'm realizing myself very, very well. Besides that, Mexico is a beautiful country. I love to come here. Dashbury and music, but also as a person. And one of the things I strongly believe in is that when you get something in your life, you are also in a position to do something back. And it kind of depends on the character, who you are, how you deal with that. Um, let me explain a little bit. In everyday life, going to school, studying, going to a job, that's part of your Flip the record, you go to your default. That's where you step out of the things you do in everyday life, your, your normal life, and think in a bigger perspective in how you can help or support or can get connected with people around you. That can be uh,
condición que, que están ahí, que están perdiendo. Entonces, tenemos que tratar de conectarnos precisamente con la gente que tiene los ojos abiertos y que está dispuesta a estar siempre en su lado de It's nice that I brought her. What makes uh, a song more successful than, than another? And which song is special for you because we don't remember that song? Um, what makes a song special? Yeah. I'm going to keep this really short and sweet. Um, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs>
snow here in Mexico, but all over the world. Um, there is a logical more demand in what's going on in the life of what's going on in the life of. Um, and there are many great artists, and not everybody's the same. So one artist is a little bit more of a rock star type. Uh, uh, rocks, uh, the, the other uh, artist is a little bit more laid back. The other, um, uh, other artist is, is, is more focusing on uh, only production. Uh, the, it, it kind of depends on the character. Um, well, with electronic dance music being so popular, and it's already so popular pop, I see electronic dance music, you call it EDM, women pop, because also because of the strength of the internet, bringing it everywhere. And people are accustomed to listen, uh, also to make music on the computers. So it's the nowadays pop music. So pop star, rock star, EDM star, you, you name it. I think we all know the big names out of the industry. And they have a certain interest which appeals to a lot of people because they can reach a lot of people with the music, with the shows. And um, so I think that's already going on. We, we have quite some rock stars already. Yes, uh, as with the word rock star, I meant, for example, like a music icon, not like a, like a figure with. Yeah, well, the icons are already there. The icons are already there. We know the big names. And the, the, the cool thing of that is that the people who actually also helped me to get in this industry and who, you know, flamed my fire to be enthusiastic about electronic music in the beginning, they're still active. And they're still considered very big artists in the industry. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you for coming out to in this interview. Thank you. It was a great pleasure to have you here. Good to be here. Too. Um, well, my final question would be, as you know, as a VM project, I have faced a lot of issues, you know, when you start then with Mark and all the competition. It's a fierce market. Uh, I don't want to call it market, but that's probably the proper word. But my point of this, what advice would you give to younger, uh, uh, to younger, the DJs, to younger producers, and above all to the younger audience uh, that that uh, wants to achieve some kind of success like you did in, in your life? Really important to uh, love electronic music. That's the, it has to, has to be a passion in you. Um, secondly, I would say stay yourself. Mm -hmm. And number three is be open to deal with criticism and use that for the good. Don't use that as something which is going to affect you as a person or as a producer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But use it as a motivation to bring you to the next level. Well, but, uh, <laughs> we have two more questions to, uh, oh. to answer in Spanish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> algún tipo de evolución del flujo al festival a los, o sea, a los grandes eventos. ¿no? La respuesta es que ya, ya es, ya es así. Y no necesariamente estoy hablando de mí, porque no tengo el, el tipo de personalidad de un rockstar, pero la popularidad de la música electrónica ha crecido y eso ha aumentado la demanda por querer saber qué es lo que sucede en la vida de cada uno de los artistas. ¿no? Y hay muchos, hay diferentes personales, personalidades, hay quienes tienen más la, la personalidad del rockstar, otros son más tranquilos, otros están más enfocados hacia la producción exclusivamente. Pero, por supuesto, la popularidad de la música el, la electrónica o el EDM, Electronic Dance Music, ha crecido y el Internet ha ayudado a llevarlo a todo el mundo y a amplificarlo. ¿no? También ahora la, todo el mundo puede hacer música en la computadora, entonces nos lleva a hacer todos distintos tipos, desde rockstars, popstars, EDM stars. No, hay muchos nombres hoy en día en la industria musical y la intención de todos ellos es llegar a la gente a través de la música. 
eh, ahora, Rockstar en el sentido de un icono, también creo que ya están ahí, hay nombres muy grandes. Y de hecho la gente que me ayudó, la gente que encendió esa pequeña llama en mí de cuando yo empecé, continúa activa y sigue siendo muy importante en la música. La siguiente pregunta fue si podría darle algún consejo a los jóvenes DJs, el público joven en general. La, el primer consejo sería que, pues, que amen el, el tipo de, de música que están haciendo, la música electrónica. El consejo dos es que sigan siendo ellos mismos. Y el tercero es que permanezcan abiertos a la crítica, que la reciban bien para que ésta sea útil y que no los llegue a ¿no? Antes que nada quiero agradecerte, Dash, por acompañarnos. De verdad es una emoción, no solamente el escuchar tu música, que nos ha dejado, de verdad, todos los días una explosión en los pies, en la cabeza, sino a toda la gente que vino el día de hoy, que queremos agradecerle y que queremos agradecerte a ti, Dash, por todo lo que nos dejas en tu música, por todo lo que dejas en los escenarios y que seguramente mañana volverás a dejar en el escenario de Six Flags. Te agradecemos muchísimo a nombre de Factory Club Radio, a nombre de Beat for Life, de Charlas con Café, de En Directo y de Canal M y de Radio Nahuatl. Te agradecemos muchísimo el que nos hayas permitido estar contigo y platicar en esta charla. Yeah, and I'd like to tell something to Dash before we close this. Okay. You know, you're loved by the, uh, by the Mexicans, but... Is that true? Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> that. Oh, yeah. But, you know, they, they say, you know, he's the most Mexican, not Mexican DJ. So, I mean, Mexicans, I'm, I'm from my show, Factory Club Radio, we give you a present. And what's the better present yes. to, to give from a Mexican to a fellow Mexican that oh, I good. Wow. <laughs> 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 Dash, thank you so much. I hope you enjoy it. I just hope you, just, as you can see, we put it here to Dash Berlin, one of the greatest DJs oh, of all time. So Don't wow. forget to vote for Dash as, <laughs> as, thank as, you so much. as DJ Mac. Here comes the greens, and I hope you enjoy it. Gracias. You're welcome. Yes. Thank you for coming, and, and it's good to talk to a fellow Mexican. Huh? <laughs> Gracias. That's very nice. You didn't have to oh, do that. I had to. Maybe if we know? Okay. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. Thank you for all the support. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to be here as much as I can. And uh, for next time, when I will be visiting, uh, I'm not gone yet, but for the next time I'm coming back to Mexico, I will surely come back here to the campus. And I would love to talk to you in your house. Thank you. 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 Thank you.